look how abundant these peppers are. We brought them outside. We're about to spray them down. I saw some aphids and some other little things that I don't even know what that is on them. So, <laughs> we're trying to figure this out. But there's definitely aphids and I'm so confused. And look at those. Look at that crazy when you spend the time to like do this from baby from seed and then you get it like an infestation like oh that my gosh. out of nowhere I'm going to take this time to go ahead and prune these way back so that they will become bushier instead of just really tall so that's what I'm also going to be doing today I've heard that that's the best way to do it so that they branch off and you get more peppers. Um, and so I'm going to be doing that today as well. Hey y'all, my name is Taquisha. This is our freedom song and I am so happy that you are here. Okay, so today we are finishing up our prep for our cut flower garden. Yes, cut flowers. And it's so crazy because three years ago, I did not plant any flowers and I was totally against flowers and I'd had no idea what I was talking about because flowers are such an integral part of gardening. They are beautiful. They add so much beauty to the garden, but not only that, the pollinators, like the pollinators, having things for the pollinators to come and invite them to your garden so that they can pollinate all the things and it can be fruitful. So we are going to have a cut flower area inside of our garden and I'm so excited about it. That's why we've been planting so many flowers, just trying to get them to grow. I really want to see such an abundance of flowers and I'm learning so much. It has been an experience, but I do see so much growth and I'm really excited about it adding flowers to our garden I think is going to completely change our spring garden this year you look at what we've done so far to prepare for our cut flower garden so the first thing was to determine where we could even have cut flowers that weren't going to take up space that we needed for growing actual food for our family so i decided to use the space right along the side of the fence next to some of our fruit trees our fruit trees are still really young and they don't take up much space at all and so i really felt like this was a good time to be able to interplant among them without affecting their growth at all okay so i have decided that we are going to use a soaker hose underneath our landscape fabric for the flowers so i did decide to use landscape fabric in this area right along the fence I got a really great deal on landscape fabric. It was like $12 or $14 um, for a 50 foot roll. So I went ahead and went with this and um, I'm so excited because this is going to be really great for weed suppression. Okay, so I brought the landscape fabric out into our driveway. I'm using a chalk marker. So I don't know how great this is going to be once I actually start burning, but for me, it helps. A visual helps me. And so what I'm doing is I am measuring from the end of the circle, nine inches from there. So I'm going nine inches from here down and then drawing another circle. I'm sure there is more than one way to slice an orange. This is the way I'm slicing ours. So this is what I'm using to make the holes. The holes are all burnt.
Okay, so this is what our roll is looking like with our soaker hose running straight down the middle. I'm not going to be able to put the soaker hose loop de loop, but we're going to get one good one good line going all the way down it to help us with some of the hydration. So this next area that I decided to cultivate, I would have to say I really actually surprised myself because when I first started to really look at the space and see what it is that we were going to do over here, I had no idea. I had no idea that this was about to be the perfect place for dahlia tubers. So with the dahlias, I didn't want to do the weed fabric because I know that I need to dig those up after every season. Having this space right here really allows for me to do that. It allows me to only have dahlias here and then I can come in at the end of the season and dig them up to store them, cover this area so that it can be ready next spring when it's time to place the dahlias back in this spot again. This space also allows for the dahlias to grow because they actually multiply. And so the hope is that when we go to dig up tubers, that it's going to be more than what we planted originally. So what I've done with the tubers is I place them in the greenhouse in some soil and I just wanted to see which ones was going to sprout. So anything that sprouted is what I'm going to be planting today. Some did not sprout and so I'm not going to plant those but I am going to go ahead and cover them with some soil to see if we can't get some late sprouts. Because we have limited space for these flowers, I didn't want to waste space putting all of the tubers in the ground when they might not be viable. And so this was definitely the best option um, for me that I could think that really made the best sense. From what I understand, dahlia tubers need 12 to 18 inches apart. And so that's why you see the measuring tape here. I'm going to place them about 12 inches apart. So this is an absolutely new adventure for me. So if you have any tips or tricks, please let me know down below. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> because listen, Three seasons ago, I had no idea what I was doing when I decided to start a garden. And our garden has been such a blessing for our family and become so fruitful and it has grown. And so I believe in just trying, not trying to learn every single thing that can be learned before you just start because a lot of things that you are actually going to learn is going to come from your experience while you are doing it. It is definitely going to come from trial and error and just figuring out your own space and your own environment and your climate. And it is going to make all the difference when you just begin working in your own area and your own space in your own garden. And yes, there are universal truths about gardening when it comes to things growing, you know, but there are going to be some things that are going to be different for you, say, versus me. I am in South Carolina in zone AB, and there are some things that grow really, really well here, but there are also things that don't grow so well here because of our temperature and our climate and those things are typical and it's normal. And so you won't really know until you get out there and put your hands to the plow and try it out for yourself. Try it and see how it works for you. One thing that I have learned for certain is that 
it ain't going to grow itself. So <laughs> if it ain't a perennial, it ain't about to grow itself. And I got to get out here and I got to do the work if I want to see the growth. And I get an amen, friends. <laughs> There has not been one day since we started gardening a few years ago that I have regretted the work that I put into the garden. And it is adding up and it is turning into a space that I more than I ever imagined. Not only am I learning so much about how to grow food, I'm actually finding my garden style. I think that that's a thing. I think. Finding a garden style is definitely a thing because the more I do, the more I step back and just kind of observe. I know what I really love. I know what brings me joy. I know what I want when I look at a space and that is developing and that is all new since gardening. I hope the same thing for you, that as you begin to put your hand to the plow and do the work, you will start to really understand what it is that you love about gardening. We are all so different, but there's a common thread with each type of gardener. Just our love for gardening, I believe, is the common thread that weaves us all together, which is such a beautiful thing. And just like that, we have the perfect space carved out for our tubers. I'm really excited about that. I know I say I'm really excited about everything, but I am. <laughs> I didn't even know this space was here. The flowers that I've planted along the border are growing so well. I'm so happy about it. Some are growing faster than others, and that's okay. All of it was started from seed, and this is the first time I've done that, and so I'm just so excited to see the growth. I think that's going to be absolutely gorgeous to have this border and then to go amongst the trees. So this right here is our fig, the one in the middle that's mostly covered up right now. That is another fig. And then we have a blueberry bush. I know everything is gonna get bigger, um, but I still think that it's going to be beautiful over here and cast just the right amount of shade. Um, it's very hot here. And so I think the shade is actually going to um, help the flowers. So we'll see, it's all a learning process. And um, I'm just so grateful that I get to actually experiment with this without any experience and just see how it goes and learn lessons along the way. I heard that slugs really love tubers so I picked up some of this slug O to put around the area where our tubers are going to be.
So here's the space completely filled in with soil. Oh my goodness, I believe this is going to be absolutely gorgeous. When all of these flowers are in bloom, this whole space is going to be breathtaking, I believe. At least my breath. <laughs> Okay, so I just lightly raked up the soil in this area and then laid down four cubic feet of soil that's already fertilized in this space so that this bed can be completely ready to plant out. And I'm about to do the same thing on this side. Both beds are watered and I just want to show you our growth with our potatoes. They are looking so good. I am just so happy about seeing so much growth all over this bed. If you didn't see that video when we planted these potatoes, um, there are 40 potatoes in each um, one of these beds. So we have two beds with 40 potatoes. I cannot wait to see what our yield is going to be. Um, and this is going to help me prepare as we move forward with learning about how much to plant for our family. Um, but I'm really excited about seeing what 40 potatoes means or 80 potatoes means for our family. Like, is it going to, how long is that going to give us potatoes to eat? So we are going to learn that very, very quickly. Very soon we will know. Look how, look how nice that looks. I just finished sweeping up the walkways and it always makes me feel so nice when things are just like in its place and kind of swept up. It's hard with the pollen. The pollen as well as the constant falling of these little bits right here. These guys are constantly falling. Um, but having a space that's just nice and tidy makes me feel so good because it's officially spring. Oh my goodness, that just settled like in my spirit, y'all, that it is officially spring and it is time for all of the things. I had a friend drop off some strawberries and so I'm actually going to plant these in the Dollar Tree little planters that we have in the entrance of this garden. I do have some more strawberries on the way that we ordered from Johnny's and I'm going to be putting that actually don't know where I'm going to be putting that <laughs> but we're going to have a lot of strawberries this season These are the bulbs that I'm going to be planting in front of the greenhouse. They have a mid to late summer bloom time. So these flowers can still bloom for as long as they want. And when it's time for them to die back, I will have some more flowers, some different flowers emerging. And so that's the hope. So I'm going to be planting these in the front of the greenhouse. And look at that color. I don't even know if it comes through really well. Um, through the lens but that is going to be so gorgeous against this black greenhouse i can just see it now you can see these were really inexpensive so if they really give a great effect that would be really good um for 15 bulbs i paid about seven dollars we'll see another little baby carrot I'm really trying to better my understanding of flowers so that we do have a continuous bloom um, 
of just flowers in our garden and so I think this is definitely a good start by allowing these cool weather flowers to be in the pot but then planting the warm weather flowers around it um, and so this might just be what I need to be successful I would love to hear the flowers um, rotations that you have in your garden um, if you do plant flowers um, how do you stay on top of making sure you are planting flowers for every season this is so new to me but i am i i already know i'm going to be so addicted to trying to just make sure that we have flowers growing all the time So it grew right through the little carton, but the carton still isn't broken down, but it did, it did pierce through it. So that's interesting. I went back and forth with planting carrots this spring and I have landed on not planting carrots this spring. I think I'm going to leave that for the fall and I don't really want to um, give up spring space for something that grows so well in the fall so anyway i'm not going to grow carrots this spring but we'll look forward to our next carrot adventure when fall comes It's past time to plant all of these little baby starts. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the ground too. All of these are flowers. These are our sweet potato slips and I just wanted to show you guys how I pulled them off. This is what they look like growing and then I just I'm going to just pull it off. There's some little nubs on there. Let's see if it can, this is what it looks like. I'm just going to stick it in some water. This, I believe this is the white Japanese sweet potato. I'm really excited about that. So I just wanted to show you what it looks like. So this piece has been sitting over here for about a week. And so they go from no roots to roots. And so I'm going to add some more water in here.
Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I'm going to end right here as I am just going to be cleaning up the garden and just sweeping all the things and pulling out all of our fall crops that are dying back to make room for all the things that we are about to be planting for the spring. I'm so, so, so very excited. I hope that this video motivates you to get out into your space, look around, see what it is that you can use or what you can do that will help you create a space that you will absolutely love. You will not regret putting in the work. So here's to another very fruitful and bountiful spring season. Happy gardening, y'all. It's so incredible. I will always, as long as I'm able, plant sugar snap peas. Going to save these pods so don't y'all worry they're trying to grow back <laughs> 